A big hello to all of you budding mathematicians out there. Are you ready for a new shape to play with? In the lessons in the series so far, we have used triangles to create quadrilaterals. We created a square from a right-angled isosceles triangle and a rhombus from a right-angled scalene triangle. Well, doesn't that leave you wondering about what shapes we could make from other kinds of triangles? In this lesson, Haley and Wesley are going to help us discover some more interesting quadrilaterals made from triangles. Haley and Wesley have a whole lot of triangles like this with them. Can you identify the different types of triangles? Let's quickly identify them. Here we have all the scalene triangles. Remember, scalene has no equal sides. Here we have a right angle scalene triangle, an obtuse angle scalene triangle, and an acute angle scalene triangle. Here we have all the isosceles triangles. Remember, we have two equal sides and two equal angles. Here we have a right angled isosceles triangle, obtuse angled isosceles triangle and acute angled isosceles triangle. And here we have the equilateral triangle, all three sides are equal, all three angles are equal and therefore we only have one type of equilateral. Let's take out the triangles we use to make the rhombus and the square. Now let's go over to Haley and Wesley to see how many different kinds of quadrilaterals they can make with these other triangles. They are going to see what quadrilaterals they can make by reflecting a triangle to make a new shape. Try this out for yourself. You will discover some very interesting things about what is possible and about what is not possible. I made this shape by using the scalene acute angle triangle. I reflected it over this side. It made a kite shape. Then I tried it over the other side. It still made a kite. Hey, that's interesting. I took the obtuse angled scalene triangle. I also made a kite when I reflected it this way. But look at this shape that I made by reflecting it this way. It is still four-sided, but I wouldn't call it a kite. More like a paper airplane. And when I reflected it this way, it made another one of these quadrilaterals. I can make this with the equilateral triangle. A diamond. Whichever way I reflected this triangle, I ended up with the same shape. That makes sense. All the sides of an equilateral triangle are exactly the same. With the acute isosceles triangle, I made a diamond like this. That looks pretty much like the rhombus we've already studied. Yes, and when I reflected it over this side, I made a kite shape, like this, and another kite shape when I reflected it over this side. Very cool. I made these shapes from the obtuse angled isosceles triangle. This way, I make a shape that looks like a rhombus to me. This way, I make a kind of an aeroplane, and this way is the same aeroplane. Great! Can you see what can come out of experimenting with shapes for yourself? Don't just let someone tell you what to believe when they talk about shapes. Go and check it for yourself. By the way, did you notice Haley and Wesley using the word diamond? Diamond is not actually a word we use in mathematics. It is called a rhombus in maths. We are going to work out the properties of the kite. After that, we will look at one of these curious aeroplane figures. By the end of this lesson, we should be able to construct a kite, describe the properties of a kite. Let's see what Haley and Wesley found out about the properties of kites. Here's Haley's shape. Now we can mark that SV is equal in length to ST and that TU is equal in length to UV and we'll mark this with a symbol. Now the mathematical term for this kite is, wait for it, a kite. So the kite has two adjacent sides equal here and two adjacent sides equal here. To be more specific, this shape is called a convex kite. Why is it convex? What property determines whether or not a shape is convex? If you need a clue, think about the diagonals. For a convex polygon, all the diagonals lie inside the polygon. Can you identify the diagonals in the shape? Well, SU is one diagonal. And if we join T to V, that would be the other diagonal. Now do you see that both these diagonals lie on the inside of the shape? 
That's what makes it convex. Now we need to discuss a new term. The angle between each pair of equal sides is called a vertex angle of the kite. Using the equal sides ST and SV, we find one vertex angle here, angle TSV. The angle between equal sides TU and UV is the angle TUV. And this angle is also a vertex angle. An angle between two sides that are not equal is called a non-vertex angle. Right, now let's continue with the properties of convex kite. Which of these angles are equal? Let's flip the cardboard cutouts that Haley used once again, just to make sure. So we've got the triangles, and if we flip it this way, we see that these two angles are equal, these two angles are equal, and these two angles are equal, because it was the same triangle. Now we've identified which angles are equal. Let's mark them on this diagram. So we know that this part of angle S is equal to this part of angle S. We also know that this angle here is equal to this angle here. And we know that the whole of angle T, let's mark it differently, we've got three, is equal to the whole of angle V. Look at all the equal parts that we have shown on our kite. We know that these two angles are equal here at S. And at U, we know that these two angles are equal. Now, how can we state this in mathematical language? We can say that the vertex angles are bisected by the diagonal which connects them, which is SU in this case. Now, let's have a look at the non-vertex angles here and here. We'll start by labeling this as T1 and T2. Here, V1 and V2. Does TV bisect the non-vertex angles? Now, be careful. We have not proved anywhere that these two angles are equal. So we cannot say that angle T1 is equal to angle T2, even if they sometimes look like it. So only this diagonal bisects the vertex angles of the kite. Now, let's label this point W, that is where the diagonals intersect each other. What about the angles at W? Can we say that the lines are perpendicular to each other? Without actually measuring the angles, how can we tell? Let's use what we know about congruent triangles. Let's look at triangle STW and triangle SVW. We know that SV is equally length to ST. We know that this angle at S is equal to this angle at S. And we also know that SW is part of both these triangles. So this triangle STW is congruent to triangle SVW because of the reason side, angle, side. Can you see how that helps us? So, this angle at W is equal to this angle at W, but they lie on a straight line, so they both must be 90 degrees. That's what we wanted. The diagonals must intersect at right angles. So here's another bit of information that we can use from knowing that triangle STW is congruent to triangle SVW. We know that TW is equal in length to VW. Let's mark that. This means that the diagonal TV is bisected. In any kite, the diagonal which bisects the vertex angles also bisects the other diagonal. Now let's put these facts together. This means that S WU cuts TWV into two equal segments at an angle of 90 degrees. Mathematically, we can say that one diagonal of a kite is the perpendicular bisector of the other diagonal. Lastly, let us investigate the lines of symmetry in the convex kite. 
Is the diagonal SWU a line of symmetry? Well, this should not be a surprise at all. We need not even do the folding. We reflect a triangle STU on two triangle SVU over the line SU. Now, can you predict what will happen if we fold the kite along the line TWV? Let's try this out on a paper cutout that I've made of our triangles. So we know that the original triangle was scalene, so it's no surprise that this part here does not fit exactly onto this. This means that TWV is not a fold line or line of symmetry. Well, if we look at this shape, I don't think there's any possibilities of more fold lines. But why don't you try this out for yourself? Well, we have found some interesting things about the kite STUV. Let's recap what we've learned in this lesson. In a convex kite, two pairs of adjacent sides are equal. The vertex angles are bisected by the diagonal which connects them. The diagonal connecting the vertex angles is a perpendicular bisector of the other diagonal. Bet you're thinking that I had forgotten all about the other shape that Wesley made. Well, I hadn't forgotten, but it will need another lesson. So for the time being, think about this. We looked at the convex kite. Wesley's aeroplane shape is sometimes called a concave kite. As your task for today, I leave you to do some thinking. Can you work out a good definition for the concave cut? We have some fun with our cardboard shapes today. Now, if you haven't been working with shapes, get moving. It's great. Salani Kakushli.